to a party on Sunday, which is very rare for me. Um, but I went to an event um, courtesy of E1 and Labyrinth. Obviously, you guys know I've been to a few Labyrinth events over the last couple of years, it felt like, because they do a lot of stuff with DJs that I, you know, I'm big fans of, like Dixon, like Arm, like Jimmy Jules, like Tricks and stuff over the years. And then, of course, I went to the... Um, the day festivals that they do also that have been pretty interesting in terms of a, a spectacle in terms of something to go to um the whole day festival thing is something that usually i don't think works that well here in the uk but they've done a really good job in terms of getting that to work especially at the scale that they do it at, especially with the people that who they're booking and whatnot etc etc anyway they had another event on on sundays i don't usually go out on sundays i miss quite a lot of sunday raves like the unfold that fold like a few happened that um Starling Pizza, which is around the corner from Fall. There's a few other events that happen on Sunday that are pretty decent, but I tend to avoid them because I like to start my week like on a Monday with you know a clean sort of bill of health go with the green juice go work out and stuff have a good fast i don't like to kind of roll over the party season from the month so the party kind of vibes from the sunday into a monday so i try to avoid going out on the sunday as much as possible but obviously i go crazy on a friday and a saturday but anyway this weekend wants to change because it was bank holiday weekend so i thought why not let's just let our head down and go a bit crazy and this event also was kind of you know around the corner or near where i live so not too far especially on the bus or on an uber or cycling i've been like that many many time so it kind of gave me a few excuse to go and over the last couple of years i've kind of fell in love with e1 in the same way that i kind of fell in love with fabric i was a real big critic of fabric a real big critic of e1 mostly because of their security and i think in recent years they've probably done a little bit of an upheaval and changed the people who do security at e1 and at fabric and that's really made a big change to how I perceive the clubs. Fair enough, the booking people have probably changed too or their booking strategy or vision of what they're doing. You know, for sure you can tell for Fabric, they have a lot more eclectic events. They cover a whole, a wide ranging, um, you know, genres and DJs and stuff. It's not just the same old kind of um, old white guys that they usually booked in the past. And the same can be said for E1. They have a real broad range, everything from like, you know, sex positive parties, like kink parties, all the way to like traditional house stuff all the way to like weirdo shit all the way to like seeing stuff like from possession and whatnot they cover a real good breath of it so i do like to go to those type of places and also for me personally i think the sound system at e1 is always really good i love that massive speaker wall they got that's absolutely blaring out the tunes and sometimes can absolutely wreck your ears i love the two different rooms that they have they have very different vibes the main room is a bit more spacious and easy to kind of find a corner to chill in and the second room is usually a little bit more grungy a little bit more straight to your face a little bit more um just a little bit more intense in terms of the lights and how they put the smoke in there and how high up the dj is so i do like the overall feel of it so you know it was kind of a win-win when it comes to that event and of course the dj dj is playing in terms of arm who's also a part of innervisions in terms of henrik schwartz i've never who i haven't seen live in a very long time and jimmy jules of course who i'm a big fan of also so um sunday rolls around so sun, sunday rolls around for, for the event for me to go to me and a friend obviously end up going there and the first thing that i ended up doing that is something that i don't really do that often when i go out is that i decided not to have any alcohol well not to have any alcohol there i had a couple of drinks before i left i had like a little top couple of tonic wine things i usually get you know the magnum stuff the typical stuff that black boys drink before they go out but i decided this time around to try to do a raving experience with no alcohol and just stick into the class a substances and for the most part it went pretty well and to the point where now i'm thinking that this might be my general way of kind of doing my nights out because i felt way more refreshed in the morning i didn't have a crazy hangover my partying didn't spill into the tuesday it just kind of I just when i got home i was just basically tired because it essentially stayed until 7 a.m anyway um or right until the end maybe about half six i think maybe the lights officially came on but in general i felt way more fresh the next day than i would have done if i would have done the combination of the class a and the alcohol and it led me to believe that maybe alcohol as crazy as this sounds maybe alcohol is more destructive than class a on a day-to-day -day basis because i would imagine most people probably can't afford to buy many drugs on a daily basis especially if you're doing some of the better stuff and maybe alcohol because it's so cheap and readily available is easily um, abused etc etc but i had a really great time 
honestly um you know for the most part we just went and did like little runs to go get bottles of water and stuff which were quite expensive don't get me wrong for a nightclub right 250 for a bottle of water is crazy but still you got a nice chilled bottle of water that you could easily kind of pop open and close the lid if you need be and it was just a generally a like, cool and chill vibe i was able to party listen to everything remember my surroundings and just not be sloppy or be messy when i was kind of partying so i definitely would um advocate or you know um, encourage people if you're like me and you do enjoy to go out a lot especially on the weekends try to have a couple of weekends where you'd maybe go out and don't drink as much or you don't drink at all and see how that goes because i really do think that it's a real big indicator to why you're out there in the first place and really will reveal your intentions and i feel like for me for the longest time when i was going out i had some troubles that i was kind of dealing with personally and i would maybe treat going out as an escape from my everyday life right i didn't really like the position i was in my life and my career goal whatever something was happening at the time right and i like to kind of go out and just completely get blacked out to the point where when I come back, so to, to the point where I'd forget my everyday life, but of course the next day it was still there. So it was kind of a weird and bad way to kind of go about those sort of things. But then over time, once I started to get more involved in the scene, I started DJing, I started promoting, I started doing the whole techno tourism stuff. I started to realize, no, I actually enjoy nightlife. I actually enjoy going to these different places, seeing how these different scenes do things, um, interacting with different people uh, and just kind of absorbing myself in that surrounding. I've always been someone that I kind of wanted to always see and feel stuff for myself i never just went to read about an account of a of an event or of a club in a, in a magazine just be happy with that i went to go and touch and feel it myself and obviously i've been given the privilege and the luxury to go and do so you know through my job and through what i've been able to do over the years blah 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 so that was really good and i really did enjoy that so that's definitely something that i would encourage many many more people to go and do the, and then once you rocked up to the event as per usual the organization when it comes to getting in to e1 is always kind of a1 um very easy to get into they've got the barricade set up around the club you queue up um the first security guard you you kind of get in touch with wants you to see their id and i'm guessing that's just to kind of root out anyone that's going to be waiting around for ages get to the front and then you, they say you have you need to have id physical and then you haven't got it you have to go home again so not to waste your time they just quickly screen you make sure you got your id then you get to the queue and then somebody this time around which was pretty good was coming down the queue and just scanning everyone's qr code of their ticket so that when you then went through to the security security stuff you could just quickly go in get your stamp and kind of go into the club so that was perfect and of course the cloakroom is really easy to use too one of the rare cloakrooms in club land especially here in london that also accepts contacts as pay or cards so you don't, if you don't have cash you can still be able to put your um bags and whatnot into the cloakroom and i would advise to do so unless you're willing and able to put your bag under a speaker or tie around your waist because e1 gets really hot and sweaty the entire club is like really 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 sticky and there's a real lack of air conditioning in that entire place so i would recommend if you do go to e1 do put your bags and coats into the locker sorry into the cloakroom go into the main room and of course we spent most of our time um listening to henrik schwartz and, and arm playing a five-hour set and from what i can see how they did the the, the kind of layout was really different in the labyrinth because usually when i've been to e1 it's usually one big like the main room is kind of one big square on the right hand side is that big speaker wall and then towards the far end is where the dj booth is right it's kind of a standard sort of layout but this time around labyrinth i guess in in order maybe to boost the ticket sales or just to kind of offer a different experience to the punters they had a vip package and um they also had a table service sort of package tables no we'll say table service but table service so what they did is that on the edges um they kind of did these like barricades where they had these different sections where people could basically have their drinks kind of put on tables and whatnot in big little you know in those massive things you see in soho clubs just massive containers for the people's drinks and ice and whatnot and then they had some staff who were kind of walking around there who were able to kind of serve people and whatnot whenever they kind of had their drinks so that was a pretty interesting setup which was a bit weird to kind of get a head around because it kind of made the club way smaller and sort of packed everybody into the middle like sardines but overall i think the vibe was pretty decent for the most part because it seemed like everybody that was in those kind of vip sections was also dancing and having a good time too there wasn't a lot of poses or people trying to look pretty everyone was really trying to turning up and i think a lot of it had to do with the fact that the general um what do you call it the general punters the ones that just bought regular tickets like i did were so hyped and ready to have a good dance like that crowd on sunday um as sketchy as it was because there was some weirdos in there to be honest but i did find it to be one of the best the better kind of club 
crowds that I've seen from Labyrinth. And I don't know if it's to do with the people that were playing, whether it's to do with the 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 date of the event being on a Sunday, whether it's to do with the location, but it was a generally pretty decent crowd. And I think that kind of added to the entire ambience of the event that we was in. So we bumped into a few friendly faces, a few cool people, had some cool random conversations. And generally, it was a really, really good night. And I think in terms of playing, in terms of playing, it was so nice and cool to see Henrik Schwartz play. I haven't seen him play in such a long time. I remember there was a period, I think early in my sort of like going out sort of like timeline where I seem to kind of see Henrik Schwartz out a lot more often. I'm not too sure if he kind of took a break, if he maybe didn't tour as much here in the UK, but I haven't really seen him on bills or on lineups a lot. So to get Henrik Schwartz to play out here in London again was pretty cool to see. And then of course, Arm played an extended foul foul set, which you don't regularly see. We don't really usually see him play that often when he does come here and I think that really suited his style and I think there was some conversation to be had around whether or not some people believe that Arm might be a better DJ than Dixon which is crazy to think because the whole reason why this is crazy to think because there was a point in time where Dixon was voted I'm sure I don't remember exactly but I think it might be four times he was voted resident advisors top DJ four times in a row back to back right and I think that was maybe the main reason why he kind of propelled his stardom he went from being a regular a, a relative relatively well-known kind of house DJ on the local scene in terms of Berlin and then as soon as he kind of got kept vo getting voted you know top DJ on RA suddenly stock went super super high and obviously you know Dixon's known for his flawless mixing his great sequencing and just really being a really astute DJ and kind of you know in terms of how he kind of delivers sets and whatnot and the build-up and everything tension all that stuff is really good when he puts these sets but if it has felt like even for me being a big Dixon fanboy somebody that's listened to all these interviews and reads all these interviews and watches all these interviews and checks out all these releases and it's in the comments check you know talking about what shirt he's wearing and on forums and whatnot it is quite interesting to see that over the years maybe the fact that he's been such a high profile dj now for such a long time and he's clearly trying to take his profile to the next level which obviously allows him to do more interesting things with his label inner visions and whatnot it does feel like maybe the djing has taken a bit of a back almost have a it's, it's taking a bit of a back seat in terms of maybe he's taking his foot off the pedal in terms of delivering really high octane level kind of sets I think the last time I saw Dixon play a really stellar 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 set was when he played um there was an Intervision label showcase that they did a few years ago in Fold that legitimately might have been one of the best parties I've ever been to over there, right? That was the first time I kind of got exposed to Jimmy Jules playing live and Dixon played, you know, an incredible set. You could tell he was really feeling it. He kind of felt the vibe with Fold being such a smallish type venue with all the people that fully, it was probably one of the fullest I've ever seen it too for that kind of level of event. But then since then, it kind of felt like to me that maybe he's, I wouldn't say phoning in the sets, but it's not as higher of a level as it was in the past but then on the other end of things when it comes to arm i feel like he has also kind of left lifted the level up to a weird level too where he's really good where sometimes you see some clips of him playing courtesy of instagram accounts like arm to dixon you think to yourself rah is arm actually better than dixon these days he's really bringing it and i think this set um in e1 maybe solidified it to the point where maybe i think like if arm isn't better than dixon he's definitely on the same level they're not as kind of you know um the levels aren't as far off as they were maybe in the past which is obviously a good thing i think overall as a label right you'd still want i think if you're dixon you probably still want people like tricks and jimmy jules to surpass you in some way because it makes the label stronger if they have all these killers and they don't just want one person bringing all the food in right because there was a point in time where dixon was the only one really getting all the bookings but now over time with all the releases and the fact that they've got all this increased profile on instagram accounts like i mentioned before bloody blah, blah 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 people are now booking them individually they're not just booking them to be like oh we want you to play back to back or whatnot they're booking them like oh we want tricks we want jimmy we want this we want that so that obviously helps the label but overall i loved what they did with the space i loved um again like i said the vip booths didn't really disturb the overall flow of the event i don't feel like i feel like the vip package that they did offer to people was pretty substantial and did really f give you another kind of experience of the night i managed to get a vip wristband off of some random person so i was able to slip in and kind of see what the experience was like and the vip wristband allowed you to basically go around the back of the 
the DJ where the booth was, which was a pretty sick, you know, place to be to kind of check out the DJ up, up and close in that kind of way. And obviously you got the ability to go to the VIP little sections where they had the tables and stuff, which was really cool too, because they had loads of ice in there. And for some reason, people just left their tables and left their drinks unattended. So I was able to grab some ice and kind of keep myself hydrated and whatnot. So that was pretty nice. And because I wasn't on the alcohol, you know, I kind of left that to one side, but that was pretty cool to see. So the VIP package, although it was a little bit overpriced in terms of being 50 to 60 pound, I think 50, I would have definitely um, have jumped on it if I was there, but 60, 70 is probably not, you know, it's probably a little bit more uh, expensive than I would like to spend. But if you're going to go out and not drink, maybe you could maybe afford to do such a thing. But overall, I thought the event was really well put together and everything, and I really did have a great time. And um, here's a quick video compilation I put together featuring Henrik Schwartz and Arm playing. I'm going to play a bit of it and skip around. Hopefully you can hear the vibe and feel the atmosphere. And of course, oh, last thing to add to, I liked whatever they had these things. If you can see the video, there's these weird kind of projection screen things going on around the back and the top of the of the venue. I'm not sure if they were LCD screens or if they were projections from a projector, but whatever they were, they really did add to the event. So again, it feels like every event that they're, they're basically improving the production quality, tweaking little things here and there, labyrinth and kind of in, you know, just trying to provide a somewhat bespoke events a bespoke events in venues that everyone's kind of com familiar with because I'm sure people have been there have all been to E1 in one you know in, on one occasion or not so it's nice to have them have that kind of ability to do such a thing and also last thing they had this room at the front of the venue I'm not sure if that was a chill out room but there was a DJ playing in this that was pretty cool to see too so it was a room that if you went just to kind of somewhat unwind you could also go and occupy so they kind of did a really good job in putting it all together but like I said before I'm a big fan of E1 and anyway, as a club so it was always going to win that way but let me play the clip so you can hear and feel what the vibe was about. This is Henrik Schwartz. Oh, and also, what a big difference it makes when the crowd is dancing and having a good time. That's what it felt like. It was so refreshing to see that. And again, there wasn't any um, stipulation about people, you know, putting stickers on phones and no pictures and stuff for some reason people were just ready to have a good time maybe it was because of the bank holiday vibes who knows but really 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 decent crowd man and i think unfortunately for club nights in london it feels like the crowd really dictates whether or not you have a good time or not so you know it doesn't matter what the what the promoter does what the venue does what the dj does sometimes if there's a shitty crowd it just will ruin your night so that can be a little bit disappointing because it's completely out of control and completely out of control of the people that are putting on the event but this time around it really did work the crowd did a really good job to add, add to everything so big up everybody that came with the good vibes This is arm playing. more Henrik Schwartz let me fast forward a bit more arms so you can hear a bit of that whatever this tune was this might have been my favourite tune the whole night it was towards the end <sighs> the bass on this was incredible to feel and witness in IRL honestly And this is towards the end when they're wrapping things up. They turn on the lights for the last, like, um, what, 20 minutes or so, which is a bit weird and kind of put you out of the, you know, put you out of the flipping zone because you're basically aware the lights are on and stuff and tripping your balls out and your IP balls dilated and whatnot. And everyone had the girly face, uh, high face in the morning, but it was quite nice. It was a quite a nice little refresh. I mean, to, before you headed out, so you wasn't completely blinded by the daylight as you walked out. <laughs> But 
but yeah, that was it for the most part. And then the only other thing is a slight, con- slight kind of you know L on our part. We did, or I did, try to get a picture with Arm at the end, like a big fat groupie that I am. And of course, that wasn't possible because I guess he had to rush off, or he wasn't really in the mood to take pictures or whatnot. I don't know what the deal was, but that was a little bit cringe, a little bit embarrassing. But hey, I think you know, being a fan, I think for the most part is a good thing and also being an unapologetic fan that's also you know interested in meeting these people in real life is actually nice i feel like despite sometimes how the reaction how they might react or how they might come off in terms of being rude or maybe not exactly giving you the response you want i think it's also always nice to kind of let people know who you're a fan of that you're a fan of them do you know what i mean it's always nice to them for them to see that you're a real real fan and you actually kind of pay attention and follow them for real and you're not just here for the hype and bloody blah 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 but you know unfortunately we weren't able to get a picture with arm but i Hopefully next time we see him, maybe we will get a picture. Maybe we will.